Hello and welcome back. This is Brian Kidd with Unriddler and today we are talking about the SAP ALV grid. In this section we'll discuss layouts, uh, many different things we can do with layouts. We can select an existing layout maybe that you have created in the past or another colleague uh, possibly created and you want to use it. Uh, we also will discuss how we save our own layout and within saving our own layout we have the option to save it as a standard layout where other people can use or choosing to create a user specific layout that is only available to the person who created. And then finally we'll talk about layout maintenance. Uh, this may be a section that uh, is only relevant maybe for a super user that uh, is aware of what layouts are needed or which ones are not and uh, generally is responsible for uh, maintaining uh, layouts from a, from a broader sense. And don't be surprised if you don't have the option to even do this. Uh, it's not typically available to everyone, but I wanted to at least show uh, the layout maintenance and uh, give you some ideas as to how you use it. In this discussion about layouts, uh, we may already have an, an existing layout that we have created in the past or there may be a layout that uh, one of our team members have created and rather than going and creating another layout that is similar to that layout that person may have chosen to save it as a standard layout where uh, other people could use it. So if there is a layout that either you have created whether it was a a standard layout for everyone or just for yourself or it's a layout that someone else has created and uh, because it's a standard layout is shared with you we can easily choose that layout by going up and we're not going to use our change layout because we're not changing the layout we want to select the layout and to do that we'll choose the select layout uh, button on our toolbar and once we open this we'll see our list of available layouts. At the top, we'll see the layout settings. By default, it's showing all, but I could choose uh, user specific or global, and global and standard uh, in the context of layouts are uh, interchangeable. So when I choose global, that means layouts that anybody can see. Or if I use user specific, I'm seeing only ones that I've created. But I'm going to leave it on all, and we can look down the list here. And by default, we can see what the default one is. And it uh, happens to be named default. Uh, it has a layout description of primary cost posting. And we can see that it has our default setting uh, flag over here. But, and that's what we're currently looking at in the report. But let's say that we want to use a, uh, a different layout. I'm sorry, we're not currently looking at the default layout. We're looking at the one that's highlighted here, which is uh, one SAP, and it says primary cost. But if I wanted, if I chose to see the default, I can do it one of two ways. I can select it here, and it, uh, it appears that I need to click that green check at the bo bottom, but actually all I have to do to select it is actually click on it. And you can see based on my, the change in this cursor that, that that will select it. So although I have this green check down here, in this case, I don't need to use it. I only need to just cl a single click on the layout. And we can see that now the default layout has been added. If I want to go back and change this, why well, don't I want to go back and select material movement? I'm going to choose 5 SAP. And you can see it, the layout is quite different. I, I see only one column in this, uh, this particular layout, and it is the value and reporting currency. For me, this does me really no good. Uh, whoever created this obviously had a reason for doing so. But uh, in my case, I would rather return and use the default layout. So I'm going to do that simply by clicking on the default layout here. Now that we have seen how to select a layout, let's uh, use the skills that we learned in previous videos 
and let's uh, we already have a total on the value and reporting currency field let's go back and add a subtotal based on cost element and I'm going to do this uh, from the screen here I'm going to select cost element and choose the subtotal button and now I've got a subtotal and let's say that I need to add one or two more fields to this and I'm going to open the change layout and let's say that I'm really interested in this reference document type I'm going to move that over to my list adopt those changes and now I've got my uh, reference document type listed I've got the report like I wanted uh, this is something that I'm going to be looking at periodically we wouldn't want to just create a layout if it's a one-time use but if it's something that we're going to be using over and over again I would highly suggest creating a layout because the layout not only saves this uh, total uh, subtotals and uh, total but it also uh, includes any filter that we apply so let's uh, let's apply a filter to uh, this uh, 420000 and 430000 just to uh, prove that we can also apply a filter and then we'll move over and because again I don't there may or may not be uh, a cost element in between these two but uh, I tend to choose a multiple select here I'll enter my 420000 and I'll go down and enter 430000 because I only want to see those two cost elements I'm going to copy those changes and then adopt those changes and now I have where I'm only looking at direct labor cost and salaries because that's what's important to me now that I have that set so I've, I've included a sort by default uh, you add a sort when you add a subtotal so I have a sort I have a subtotal and I have a filter and now I've got it exactly like I want it from here I'm going to choose the save layout button and when, once I click on that let's talk through this screen uh, you'll notice that here's my the, the list now if I had a layout that uh, let's say that I wanted to permanently make changes to the default layout and that now I want to include the changes I recently made in the default layout it will by default put in the last layout or the current layout that I'm using but uh, I don't want to overwrite this layout I want to keep this layout like it is but I want to create a very specific layout uh, for uh, labor cost and salary so what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to first create a standard layout uh, or a global layout uh, this will be a layout that other people can see because I've been notified by colleagues that they also would like to see the data by uh, direct labor costs as well as salary so I'm going to uh, change this and try to give it some short description and this is quite hard to do uh, and then I want to put salaries so it'd be a very short description but down below in in the name I can really spell it out and say only direct labor cost and salaries and I'm not going to choose this again I'm choose I'm creating a global or standard layout so uh, I don't want to choose this because other people want to see it and you'll notice that this default setting is checked uh, I like the idea of being able to create a default setting but again we have to be careful because if I because I'm choosing a global layout where anybody can see and I'm also choosing uh, to, to make this the default once I do that and save it I am in, in effect applying that layout and saying whoever uses it by default this is a layout that's going to display so be really careful there's no problem with setting the default for user specific because we're saying okay every time I sign on to this I'm going to use a very uh, user specific layout and I want to use that as my default but remember when I don't have this checked and I do check this I'm basically saying I'm setting the default 
for all users of this report. So be careful when you use this. I am going to choose to uncheck that because I don't want everybody using this report. This is not something that they would probably want to see. A default layout It's typically one that uh, maybe has all the columns that are relevant but maybe not have any filters or sorts and it's, um, I'm quite reluctant to set a global layout uh, as a default. But Anyway, I've, I've unchecked that, and by choosing the Adopt, it has gone out. It's created that layout for me, so it's telling me at the bottom that the layout was saved. And now if I return to my Select Layout list, I'll see my new one that I just created. And although I entered it in lowercase SAP, uh, by default uh, makes that uppercase so I can see my direct labor sales I mean salaries and I can see that full description there and I can see also that that has been applied because it's highlighted so I'm gonna uh, let's switch to another one and we can see that this the default layout has not been adjusted it, it's remained the same and I have uh, created a new layout that's very specific to my current needs. Now that would be available to anybody who needs to use it. Now let's return back and say that I only want, and I'm going to change my filter a little bit and create a new layout. So let's open our filter and instead of seeing both of these cost elements, I'm going to remove one of them. I'm going to apply that and then I'll adopt those changes. And now I'm only seeing direct labor calls. And this is something that I'm, I really care about. It's worth me creating a uh, layout for that. But when I go back, again, I wanna create, keep this direct labor and salaries uh, layout. I don't wanna overwrite it. So I'm gonna choose just, let's scroll this over just a little bit. I'm going to just keep this as direct labor. I'm going to remove the salaries and I'm going to remove and salaries and I'm just going to keep only direct labor cost. And here I'm going to choose user specific and I'm going to choose use a default because this is usually what I want to see. So I'm going to set this as a default and I always have the option once I've run the report to change it to some other layout, but I'm going to go ahead and choose this option. Notice up here that currently, because I haven't applied this, our uh, d the default layout is set as the default setting here. So let's adopt those changes. And this is good. So let's notice that what SAP requires that if you're using uh, creating a user-specific layout, they're telling us that it must start with a, a letter. So it has to be a letter between A and Z. So it didn't like the fact that I used this forward slash. Now in standard or global layouts, we must use this forward slash. But in uh, user specific layouts, we do not. So I'm going to remove that so that we only have DIR underscore LAB. And let's apply that. And now I'm seeing only direct labor cost. This is very specific to my needs. I only created it as a user, user specific. So let's open our select layout again. What you'll see here is, is default setting on two different columns. And that's because this one is a user specific column. And that is my user specific default. But for everybody else that may not have a user specific layout set as their default, they they will in turn get this um, default layout. And we can further filter this. So if I only want to see user specific, now after I applied that filter, I'm only seeing the direct labor cost layout that I just created. If I go to global, I see all of the others and I still see the ones that I've created because I created it as a global layout, but I don't see my user specific layout. We can apply those changes. 
I want to now discuss the layout maintenance. Now, don't be surprised if you don't have this authorization, but for those who do and are responsible for maintaining layouts, uh, I do want to show a, a brief uh, discussion about how we would maintain uh, layouts on the ALV grid. So to get to that to that screen, we'll have to choose settings, layouts, and then we'll go down and choose manage. And once I choose manage, uh, we can see that on the layout management screen, I'm currently using seeing the user layout. Uh, and this is the only one that I've created. And let's say, for example, that I wanted to uh, delete this. I no longer need it uh, for whatever reason. When I created it, it served a purpose, but now I no longer need it. I don't want it cluttering up my list. I can, from here, choose that, uh, that row and then delete it by choosing Delete Layout here. And once I delete it, I, I can't get it back. It is gone. Uh, but this is the way you delete. You don't have an option to delete from the other uh, screens, but you must go into Layout Management. OK, I was currently uh, uh, or previously in the user layout. Now I've moved to standard layout, and I'm seeing the standard layouts that are available here and if I wanted to and had the correct authorization I could delete those uh, from this list again you want to be very very careful when you're doing this because obviously um, you could delete a layout that uh, somebody has spent quite a bit of time have been using it for a long time uh, so I'd highly recommend uh, be very very careful and talk to all the right people, especially talk to the person who created it and the last person who changed it. I would recommend never, ever in SAP, I don't think that I've ever tried it, uh, so SAP may have uh, something, uh, some coding that would prevent you deleting a layout that SAP created, but I would highly recommend never deleting anything that was created by SAP, even if you have the authorization to do so.